Tom here from Orange Systems, and TrueNAS 12 is here. It feels like only a little while ago, because it kind of only was a little while ago that we were talking about the convergence of FreeNAS and TrueNAS into one code base, and that transition has essentially been completed now. Now, don't worry, you're not forced into upgrading here, but the future is TrueNAS Core, not FreeNAS, so it's kind of a, that convergence came with a name change. I still like the Shark logo, but I'm gaining... Uh, familiarity with the other logo and I'm okay seeing it now. I'll at least throw that out there. Before we dive into the details of the release and what it brings to the table here, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. TrueNAS 12.0 release. IX System is pleased to announce the general availability of TrueNAS 12.0 release. This is the first production version of the unified FreeNAS and TrueNAS release and is renamed to TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Enterprise, respectively. Since this 12.0 release candidate, an additional 30 final polishing bugs have been found and fixed, so the full 12.0 release version is now complete. Now, Something about the way the release cycle is. Also, I'll leave a link to the Reddit post where they're answering some Q&A over here uh, that's still ongoing. So this is just from the other day. I waited a day to do the video for timing and the fact that I wanted to load some of my systems and see if I had any issues. And so far, I haven't. Well, not completely issue-free, but we'll cover that in just a second. I also want to bring up the release schedule. So the quality cycles that things are going through are a little bit different with TrueNAS 12. And where you would have seen release... Uh, on TrueNAS 12 would have been about the equivalent of FreeNAS 11 series on their U1. And what they're doing is, in some ways, they're doing a few more quality cycles before they release. So what you see as release now, if you would have been following the way they did it prior in the FreeNAS, you would have seen U1. Because a lot of people wait till there's update one release before they switch to a new major version of FreeNAS or TrueNAS. But don't worry, there's still ongoing support for the FreeNAS 11 for now, uh, 11.3 series for now. So you don't have to switch right away. And if you're mission critical, you maybe want to carefully do this. Now, so far, but so far is also only a couple days of uptime. I have my systems updated, at least a couple of them. And before you're wondering why I'm blinding you with the light colored theme, this is the first issue I ran into where people were talking about the reports not working. And I'll, I wanted to demonstrate that. So I can go over here to reporting and hey, look, reports. But what I've been noticing, and I, this was mentioned in that Reddit post there, well, one, it sometimes takes a little bit of a long time to render. I've seen it happen on the light theme. Like I, I'm actually really happy it did this right now. Uh, but we'll go back over to the dashboard, we'll reload the page, and then it'll start working again for the report. So actually we'll go back over here to the disk report. And now they're gonna show up again. Once in a while, the reporting just seems to mess up, but it seems to mess up really consistently when you're doing it in the other theme, the dark themes. It seems to work much better in the light theme, but it does occasionally seem to pause Chrome. I was able to get it to do it in Firefox as well, so it's something with the bug on there. Uh, so far, that's the only problem I've really run into, and I updated these systems about, let's see, this one was done only... Um, one day as of 11.36. So I updated them like the evening it came out or maybe the next morning got the updates applied and they went really well. I'm going to do a completely separate video for doing in-place upgrades and talking about that. And also I have this one right here. Same thing about a day ago I updated it. This is the True NAS Mini, which everything else seems to be functioning other than the reports pausing and it's kind of a random problem. And a couple of people had mentioned uh, whether or not the temperature was showing in here. And I guess for some people it is, some people it isn't. I happen to be lucky with two of the systems that I've done so far that the temperature shows. And I'll file bug reports when I have the details of any system I have that doesn't show the disk temperatures or CPU temperatures or anything that's missing because you don't get bugs fixed by yelling about them. You get bugs fixed by going and filing tickets and that is being discussed, of course, in any of these forums and all the links are right here. I'll leave to that. So, so far, uh, it's been 
pretty great with the new system in terms of I'm happy to see it finally not called release candidate because you know you, you feel better if you're running something at least for me in production um, because I use it for all my videos and some of the stuff we use here at office I like when it was out of release candidate because it feels a little bit better to say it's in production and as I stated based on the updated release cycle it's U1. Now let's briefly cover a few of the new features if you haven't been following along with the whole 12 update of what they are going to be offering in this version. First thing I'm going to mention is ZFS native crypto. That's a pretty big enhancement because now you can do encryption based on the data set. Now where I am a little confused, and this is why I have to do a future video because I haven't really figured out this problem and why I have both of these true NASs pulled up is we're gonna go over here to my storage and talk about that feature because I was told, or at least someone in a forum, I haven't verified this because I don't see the option. I don't see any option to upgrade my pool to the new version of pools. This was an in-place upgrade from the previous version of FreeNAS. So if we go here though, and we add a data set, what I'm missing is that option here, even though I don't see an option to upgrade my pool, it doesn't say that I can use encryption, but let's go over here. This was natively loaded with the FreeNAS 12 when it was in beta and I brought it all the way through to release and we add a data set. Inherit non-encrypted options right here. And in here, I'm missing that ability to do that and I don't know why. Uh, it's not even in the advanced options here. So I'm a little bit confused as to why, or maybe I have to redo the encryption. Like I said, this is some of that in-place upgrade stuff I'm gonna research into a separate video on. But that's a really cool feature. One of the other thing that's gonna be really nice is fusion pools. Now, to rebuild with a fusion pool, I'm pretty sure once again, we're gonna have to rebuild the pool, and especially because you're configuring them differently if you do these, but this is a real enhanced feature. Um, I'm hoping IX Systems is gonna have some better reporting on this at a future date, but I do they do have some links to it. I know a couple of sites have done some testing on it, uh, including Level 1 Text has a video about the way the metadata works with the fusion pool. It's been interesting and it's a cool enhancement. It's also going to add more challenges when people set these up because they're going to want to know what's the best and most optimized way to do this. And it's one of those answers where it depends on your workloads. But fusion pools do offer some really interesting ways of adding caching and other options and metadata caching to the pool. So it's definitely a welcome enhancement, but don't worry, you can just use it the standard normal way, like a standard Z pool with all the drives. It's just an enhanced add-on, but not something required to be used. Performance improvements. Virtually every air platform has been updated and includes some major performance improvements. And this is just a lot of optimization went into the coding. So there's not a major facelift in terms of the interface change. It's more a facelift of, you know, it's called true NAS core rather than free NAS, but definitely the performance is there. Now that it's feature complete and fully not a release candidate, but fully released. I'm going to work on some performance videos myself with the equipment that I have. And if I get real inspired, I'll actually reload one of them and try to see if I can take the same hardware and compare what it performed with on FreeNAS 11.3 versus uh, TrueNAS 12 to see if there's that much of an enhancement on there. But I do like the overall feeling that I have. And I know that's very subjective and not objective that it feels nice and fast when we're setting things up. And of course, you know, the overall feelings I have about it has been really good because it's been, even the release candidates were really stable for me and I've been using them and didn't really have any issues, but I'm not saying there's not any, just the use cases I have didn't have them. Uh, the VPN support, kind of neat. It has VPN, both client and service support. That's pretty cool for uh, those of you that want to directly do it. I personally, I still use my firewall for my VPN, but it's also now natively built into the TrueNAS system and the TrueNAS cloud integration. This has been on my list to test as I want to look at this and I have some customers really wanting to talk about how to manage their fleet because, well, they've got a fleet of these that are scattered across different locations and bringing it all into one central command is something that I'm interested in as well. So I will be doing some future dives into that. And then of course they have a long list of bug fixes of all the, you know, major changes that were done in this before it got fully released. So I'll leave a link to this so you can use it for the reading. I'm excited that it's out. I have not had problems doing any of the in-place upgrades that I've done just with a couple systems and including ones that I did in 11.3. I still have more to do and then I'll work on that as part of doing a video breaking down some of those details and I want to figure out the right answers for problems people have said they've experienced with jails. I know there's a couple comments and I'll leave that Reddit post on there because there's a couple comments on the fixes for the jail, something about the network working, just checking a box and unchecking it, resetting it. Also, I will note, uh, I had a weird quirky issue. When I first upgraded, it wouldn't 
I don't know if it was a caching issue, but by changing the theme back and forth from dark to light, uh, it, that problem went away where it just kept not displaying anything. Might have been me, might have been my browser. I know switching the themes just made it magically work without rebooting any servers, so I thought that was kind of neat. But the reporting problem, it's intermittent, as you kind of notice in, from my demo here, but overall, I don't think it's too big of a deal. Uh, it's something I'm sure it'll get worked out. It seems to do it much less under the light theme than the dark theme, but once I have a clear, repeatable problem, I will probably go over there, follow, follow a ticket, or find out if someone's already filed a ticket on that particular topic because that's how problems get fixed, not by commenting on this YouTube uh, telling me how it's wrong with it, by contacting and following the ticketing process over at IAC Systems so the developers know, because Tom knows about problems, but the developers really are the ones that have to know about the problems and they will work to solve those issues and get everything working right. But I'm excited about this release. I'm excited about the progress of the TrueNAS and the convergence of it. And uh, yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say. I'll leave links to all this. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.